And now, a tale well calculated to keep you in... Suspense. In a moment, Act One of Formula for Death. Written especially for suspense by Jonathan Bundy. Now, look here, Fernal. You assured us you'd begin grinding the necessary lenses days ago. Weeks ago, in fact. I know, Colonel Humboldt. I know it. Well, then why haven't you? Because, Colonel, I haven't yet received my formula from Dr. Hoffman. Dr. Hoffman? Until he brings it here, there's, well, simply nothing that I can do. You mean Frederick Bernard Hoffman? Yes. Oh, then heaven help us. Why, oh, why couldn't someone beside that old crackpot have been assigned to develop the formula for this lens system? Don't you know, Hoffman, his reputation? Oh, very well. Well, then why pick him of all people? Because, sir, he's the only man we can depend on to do it properly. I don't believe it. As a matter of fact, I've been wondering why you haven't just fed the requirements into one of those electronic brains and let it devise the formula for you. In a matter of seconds. Perhaps, well, days, weeks, months. That was tried, Colonel Humboldt. You know it as well as I do. And, sir, with no success whatsoever. But it has been months now, for now, literally months, since you promised us this optical system. And what has happened? Absolutely nothing. One of the potentially most important factors in celestial observation from a guided satellite must wait on the whims of a doddering old, old crackpot. Crackpot? Well, isn't he? You think I haven't heard of his silly hobby, his preoccupation with the supernatural? His ridiculous belief in psychic phenomena, his, his conviction that he himself is endowed with supernormal powers. Who knows? When you consider some of the miracles of engineering that Hoffman has made possible, well, perhaps he is. Oh, yes? Well, then why doesn't he send you the formula telepathically instead of holding us up this way? Isn't there anything you can do to hurry him up? Nothing whatsoever. So our entire science program waits for him. Just waits. The entire world waits, Colonel. Including our enemies. Oh, I tell you, it galls me to twiddle my thumbs while this superstitious old man with a single specific piece of knowledge spends his time communing with the spirits. Including our enemies, Colonel. What, sir? Please don't forget that, sir. Because there isn't a country on earth that wouldn't do almost anything to have this formula. Or to keep us from having it. If he ever completes it. Oh, of course he will. But in the meantime, sir... Well, then why doesn't he? In the meantime, Colonel, I hope you've done as I asked. You mean the guard about that little place of his up in the country? Yes, sir. Oh, yes, yes, yes. We've had two or three men on duty up there 24 hours a day watching him and his apprentice. Uh, Apprentice. (laughs) Apprentice what? Do they work on his formula? No. All they do is putter about in his flower gardens and feed the birds. But as soon as he is ready, and it should be sometime today. Today. Today, you say. No, next month, more likely next year, perhaps two years from now. Do you realize how long it took to develop the famous Delocar lens that first made an efficient bomb site practical? Do you know how long it took Hoffman to develop that? Over three years. Ho- Ho- Hoffman provided the formula for that? Yes. Oh, I see. Well, I, uh, I didn't know. And at that time, too, we closed his work in utmost secrecy. Kept his little country place under guard. And he worked completely alone on it? The way that he supposedly is working on this? Colonel Humboldt, you may be sure that every waking minute that that magnificent mind of his is working. Uh-huh. He is working on it. Well... But what if something were to happen to him, eh? Well, that is the risk we take. I see. And now, since we may receive word from Hoffman almost any minute, if he keeps his last promise to me... Yes, if, if. I know, I know, oh, Colonel. You are no more impatient than I am, sir. It's only that I understand this man, his, his, his odd foibles. In any event, I suggest that we discuss the safeguards that must be taken, the escort that will be necessary to ensure his getting here safely. Yes, 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 by all means. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course, of course. If a tertiary 
curvature of 16 degrees from the axis B equals equals uh, uh, equals 1 plus A over E to the nth power. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then the cube of cosine R will automatically, automatically compensate for any variation in the flexing of the meniscus. Of course it will. And now, using Napierian logarithms to determine the hyperbolic function of the system with the factor V, now equal to Y, equal to the secant B plus R squared over 1. Of course, of course, of course. Oh, I have it, I have it. Stefan, Stefan, my boy, come in here. Stefan! Huh? Yes, Dr. Hoffman. Come here, my boy, come here. Uh, look, look at it. I have it now. It is finished. The formula it is completed. Excellent, Doctor. My congratulations. Thank you, my boy. And I deserve them. For this formula, Stefan will forever stand as a monument in the annals of scientific achievement. A monument to me. And Stefan, only I could have done it. Because of my gift of communication with those who have gone before me. Because my powers are above those of normal men. Are super normal. <laughs> so I must memorize it now. The square of the fact of V equal to the secant B plus R over Y. Excuse me, doctor. Uh, uh, what, what, what? You are a copy of the formula now so I can give it to Dr. Fernald. Ah, I'll give you the formula? Yes, sir, I'll need it now. No, 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 my boy, you do not understand. I will take it to him myself as soon as I have finished memorizing it. Memorizing? Of course, my boy, so that only I will know it. I, I see. But, uh, Dr. Hoffman, I, I... Yeah, yeah, well, well... Well, uh, what if something were to happen to you? <laughs> have no fear, my boy. Nothing will happen to me. Yeah, and the tertiary curvature of 16 degrees from the axis B equal to 1 plus A over E to the ninth. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I have it now, I have it. I get Mr. Fernald on the phone. Uh, yes? Uh, yes, hello? Uh, Dr. Hoffman? Uh, ju just one moment, please. Doctor. Yes, just... Uh, there. Uh, there we are. Uh, now the formula is only in my mind. So now, Stefan, I am ready to talk to Mr. Fernald. The phone, please. Yeah, yes, sir. Here, here, Doctor. Uh, doctor. Fernald? Uh, yes, Dr. Hoffman. You're ready now? You finished it? Yeah, it is finished. Today, as I promised you... I shall bring you the formula for the new optical system. Oh, splendid. Splendid, sir. Now, we're all set up here to begin work on the lenses immediately. Good. Now, you're sure you wouldn't prefer to have one of our men drive you in here? Of course not. I'm not a helpless old lady. I, I shall drive in myself. <laughs> very well, very well, sir. Nonetheless, although you may not know it, Colonel Humboldt has arranged an armed escort for you. They're waiting in some cars outside your home right now. Well, of course I know it. I can see them from the window. Then you realize how anxious we are to give you every protection, sir? Yeah, yeah. Uh, to protect me or the formula? Oh, oh well, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know, I know. But you are no more anxious than I am for now. For it is I who have spent so many weeks in working it out. Uh, yes. Well, now I suggest you start immediately. As you leave your driveway... The escort will follow you. All right. I shall leave immediately. Splendid, Doctor. Splendid. I'll be waiting for you. Goodbye. Yeah, goodbye. <laughs> Armed escorts, he says. He has provided. Them. I know. I can see them now, Doctor, waiting outside. Do you need them? Of course not. He is an idiot. That will only make suspicion. Instead of protecting me, Stefan, that will only endanger me. You think you might be in danger with hmm? this great secret I now hold? Of course I am, my boy. A danger from whom, Doctor? Oh, does it make any difference? But Stefan, my boy, instead of the guard he has sent, I have a better plan. Yes? Yeah, yeah, much better. Only one that shall completely outwit anyone who might try to intercept me on this mission. What is it, Doctor? You will see. Now, first, you fetch my cloak with the hood, the big hood on it. And then? Uh, well, then you tell Mario, the old gardener, that I wish to speak with him. 
Do you mind telling me why, Doctor? Now just wait, my boy. Wait and see. Now go get him, get old Mario, and bring him in here. Very well, sir. You sure you wouldn't like me to drive, Doctor? No, 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 thank you. I shall drive. You sound very happy, Doctor. Well, well, why not, my boy? I have the formula now in my memory, and we shall have no trouble getting into Fernald in the optical works. In spite of all that armed escort nonsense. That was rather unexpected, wasn't it? Did you not see the guards about the house all the time for all these weeks? More nonsense. More nonsense. But we fooled them now, haven't we? Yes. Yes, we fooled them. Ah, that poor old Mario, all dressed up in my cloak. The top of it pulled down over his face. He looked so much like me, it almost fooled myself. And not one of those silly men with the guns could know it wasn't me. <laughs> and then, when they were gone, by driving away in the open with this old cow, Mario's... You and I, we made no suspicion whatsoever. It was very clever of you, Doctor. <laughs> but not necessary, Stefan. Because no one knows better than I do that there are certain people who would like to prevent me from delivering this formula. You're quite right, Doctor. I'm so glad you thought of this. Yes. Stefan, my boy, there are people who would stop at nothing. At nothing, my boy. You're absolutely right, Doctor. You can see I hold a pistol here in my hand. Oh, unnecessary, my boy, unnecessary. Because everyone thinks we are in my car and fire ahead and followed by the guards. No one knows that you and I are here, comfortable, safely. Stefan. Yes, Doctor. Oh, I see. Your pistol, Stefan, is not for my protection. Uh, my loyal apprentice has been one of them. True, Doctor. And in return for your life, you will give me the formula. No, Stefan, of course I won't. You know better. Now put down that gun. I'm sorry, Dr. Hoffman, but there is no choice. Either you tell me the formula, slowly, so I can write it down, or I pull this trigger. I suggest you take the next little turn off. We can stop there and be undisturbed. Ah, the secrets you must have stolen for them. But this is the important one. Doctor, it's you or the formula. Well? No. Never. I will die before I give it to you. You'll die if you don't. Better stop and tell it to me, Doctor. No, I will not do it. Then there is only one thing I can do. To keep you from delivering it. Only one thing, eh? Slow down now and pull into that neck. Only one thing, eh? Doctor, slow down. Slower, Hoffman. That curve ahead. Look out! We're going up the road! And you say that you're the, the what? The gardener? Yes, sir, Mr. Farnal. Uh, my name is Mario, sir. But why did he send you in his place? What's the matter with Hoffman? Didn't he see the guard that Colonel Humboldt sent up there for him? Didn't he think that we'd protect him adequately? Well, I'm sure I do not know, sir. But where is he? Where is Hoffman? He said that he and his apprentice, young Stefan, would follow along in my car, sir. In your car? To avoid any suspicion, Dr. Hoffman said. Oh. Oh, oh, fine. He was afraid the two cars full of armed men would only attract attention, would only make it uh, dangerous for him. Oh, he did, eh? But where are they now? Where are they? Uh, maybe if uh, uh, Colonel Humboldt sent out some of his men to look for them... The Colonel's men have been backtracking that highway ever since you got here. Oh, my dear, if anything happens to Hoffman... <laughs> it was very amusing, though, sir. Did you say amusing? What can be amusing about a situation like this? Well, I mean, when I got here... And even Colonel Humboldt himself thought I was Dr. Hoffman. Amusing, eh? Well, let me tell you something, Mario. If you... Humboldt, any luck? Have you men found Hoffman yet? No. No, Fernal, no, I'm afraid not. All we know, and that was from a phone call to a neighbor, is that Mario here has told us the truth about Hoffman leaving there in Mario's car. How long will it take your men to get to his house out there? Well, as a matter of fact, Fernal, 
They've already been there. Oh, they've already been... Oh, excuse me. Uh, Fernow speaking. Sergeant Granby, Mr. Fernow. Yes, you found him? We found his car. Yes. Completely wrecked, sir. What? It went over a cliff at a curve. Must have gone over to very high speed, sir. Complete wreck. And the doctor? His body was inside of it. Oh. He must have been killed instantly. Uh, I see. Very well, Sergeant. No sign of the assistant, though. The young scientist who worked with him and left with him. Thank you, Sergeant. Well? Well, pronounced? An accident. Hoffman is dead. Yeah. Oh, no. And with him? The formula. But I don't understand about his apprentice, Stefan. He's disappeared. His apprentice? Yes. Stefan was with him. He left there with him. What are you trying to do? Why isn't he dead? Of course not. You can't go in there. What is that? What is that going on? Don't you understand? I'm Dr. Hoffman. Fernald, what is this? Well, I say you're not Dr. Hoffman. Hoffman? I'm sorry, Mr. Fernald, but this man here insists that he's not... Stefan. Stefan. Who? Which? Stefan, what happened to you? Why do you call me that, Mario? Don't you know me? Your own employer. But you are Stefan. Of course you are. But good heavens, man, you're hurt and badly hurt. Now, what happened? What happened to you? I had to crash the car to save the formula. Must be suffering from shock. He needs a doctor, I think. Wait, Colonel. Here, my boy. Sit down. Here, here, over here at my desk. Badly bruised and bleeding. Now, now, there. there. Now, Stefan, tell me. You call me that, too. What? What is the matter with you? Don't you know me? I am Hoffman. The doctor. There's no time to lose. Yes. Yes, there is no time. I must give you the formula while I can. You? Paper. Pencil. Quickly while I'm still able. Well, uh, yes, of course. Yes. Yeah, yeah. But how do you know it, Stella? I tell you, I am Hoffman speaking to you. Now, quiet, please. While I still have strength to give the formula. Uh, Tertiary curvature of 18 degrees from the axis B, which is equal to 1 plus A over E to the nth power. Yes. This man is out of his mind. That must be gibberish. He thinks he's hot money. Don't you see, Humboldt? Don't you see what he's writing? The formula. The Hoffman secret. What? You see how the various factors in it fit together almost miraculously. Look, look, it's it's as only Hoffman himself could put it down. But uh, it's almost as though Stefan were possessed of... Possessed of Hoffman's spirit. Good heavens, Fernald, you... You mean you really think that such a thing is possible? Well, I know that Hoffman talked about the supernatural. But this... Uh, uh, gentlemen, it's finished... I promised I would bring it to you, and I have. Now, look, my boy, look. Now I must lie down. I... Uh, uh, Here. He's fainted. Uh, no wonder with those injuries. Mario, open that window and fetch some water. No, no, wait, 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 wait. For now, yes. Look, he he seems to be trying to say something more. It, it, it might be important. Well, I serve because of the virginities, so, but at... I am sworn never to reveal. Yes, Dr. Hoffman, I will tell. I am Stephen Heron, American educated since 16. But my prior rigorous training was as a spy. I have scrupulously avoided contact with my government. Waiting for the right time. The formula for the lens system... Unbelievable. You think so, eh? Wait a minute. Here. Look at this. The empty holster on his hip. And here. Here's a smaller gun right here inside his belt. Oh. And how about he's coming to? Fernand, if Hoffman is dead, it's because this man killed him. Oh, not with his gun, perhaps. It hasn't been fired. Oh, no. Do not shoot me, please. No, shooting would be far too good for you, Stefan Heron. It is Heron, isn't it? Yes, yes. I am Heron. All right. Now, how did you do it? How did you kill him? Uh, no, no, I did not. He tried to kill me. To get the formula. That's why you killed him. I tried. 
tried to force him, but he wouldn't tell me. What? He wouldn't tell me. He made the car go faster and faster. And then the curve, and the car went over. No, 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 wait, 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 Stefan. You say he didn't give you the formula? No, no. But I am content. You hear me? I am content because you and your country, you don't have it either. He wrecked the car. He's dead. He can't give it to you. Nobody knows it. Wrong, Stefan. What? Because Hoffman has given it to me. He has? Yes. Through you. I... I still can't believe it, Fernald. I know, Colonel. I know exactly how you feel. And that is the reason I talked with the psychic investigator, a man who's an expert about the so-called supernatural. Oh, you did? Well, what, uh... What did he say? Only that there are many cases on record in which an injury, especially one to the head, has resulted in temporary personality control of the sort that we witnessed, of Stefan taking on Hoffman's personality. I, uh, I understand such cases are well recognized by the psychologists. Yes, but... But what of Stefan's temporary knowledge of the formula for now? The formula that existed only in the mind of Dr. Hoffman while he was alive. Possibly, this psychic investigator told me, possibly, Colonel, it was a case of thought transference. Yes, thought transference occurring as a result of Hoffman's tremendous concentration on his formula at the moment of his death. But, who knows? What do you think? Suspense. You've been listening to Formula for Death, written especially for suspense by Jonathan Bundy. Suspense is produced and directed by Fred Hendrickson. Music supervision by Ethel Huber. Heard in tonight's story were Walter Grise as Colonel Humboldt, Ivor Francis as Fernald, Herb Duncan as Stefan, Louis Van Ruten as Dr. Hoffman, Guy Rapp as the gardener, also David Kerman and Bob Reddick. This is Stuart Met speaking. Listen again next week when we return with The Lunatic Hour, written by John Robert. Another tale well calculated to keep you in... Suspense.